Hi, this is Dr. Brian Walsh, and I want to talk to you quickly about the problems that modern blood chemistries pose uh, for us nowadays. There's really two major problems with blood chemistries, and the first one has to do with the reference ranges. Now, reference ranges, uh, except for a few markers like cholesterol, they're not standardized. This means that markers can vary, or reference ranges can vary from lab to lab, from state to state, and from country to country. And here's an example. If you live in Maryland, you might have a blood sugar of 60 and be considered hypoglycemic based on the laboratories there in Maryland. If you decide you want to move to California or San Diego, for example, you can still have your blood sugar at 60, but now you might no longer be considered hypoglycemic because the reference range is wider and uh, blood sugar of 60 falls within the reference range. And it may seem a little bit silly, but it's possible that with certain markers, you can move around the United States and actually get different diagnoses depending on where you go. That's not an indication of health. So the first problem with reference range is that they're not standardized. The second problem, and this is really the major problem I find with reference ranges in blood chemistries today, is that the reference ranges are based on sick, diseased population. This is because laboratories do not go out and do research in order to determine what the reference ranges and the data are for their labs. Rather, what they do is they take the data of people that come to them, meaning people that go to the doctors and need to get their blood drawn. So they use that information of people that are sitting in the waiting room that have gone to the doctor that are unhealthy, and they use that to create their reference ranges. So when you go to the doctor, you, your blood work is being compared to people with cardiovascular disease, diabetes, who, people who are overweight, might have cancer, they're fatigued, eat junk food, have hormonal imbalances, they have the cold or the flu. In other words, unhealthy people. Now, so this is why the reference range is great at catching disease, but it's not good at evaluating health. So those are the two major problems when it comes to reference ranges. The second major problem with uh, blood chemistries are lack of adequate markers. This is primarily because, especially here in the United States, in the past 20 years, health insurance companies have really dictated what markers and what labs doctors can run on their patients that are covered by health insurance. So what's happened is less and less markers are being covered by insurance and therefore less and less markers are being run by doctors. And what happens is then you only really get to see a glimpse of what the bigger picture is when you don't run enough markers. And it also takes a doctor a lot longer to try to figure out what's going on with you than if they ran a, a, an adequate panel in the first place. But rather than talk more about this, let's look at a real world example. This is for a blood work from a 26 year old female who exercises regularly, she eats healthy, she's not overweight, and generally she's healthy, although she talks about being fatigued sometimes. Again, so she's pretty young, but here's her blood work. Now, if you notice in the flag zone here, nothing fell outside of the reference range. That means that all of her results were within the reference range for this particular lab. But here's what we see, and I won't go into detail about these, but I just want to give you an idea. Uh, when you tighten up the reference range and you start to look at it from a health perspective, that you start to see a lot more things. So, namely, we saw a uh, low glucose and LDH, which to us indicates possible hypoglycemic tendencies or blood sugar fluctuations. Uh, sodium and potassium are a little bit off, and this to us indicates that there might be a adrenal issue or some kind of stress physiology. Uh, protein and globulin were both a little bit elevated, and this to us indicates that there might be a digestive issue, namely a low acid production in the stomach leading to uh, poor digestion. Her iron was a little bit high, which can be an oxidative stress or, or it can be inflammatory to the body. Triglycerides were a little bit low, and we look at the second page here. All of her thyroid markers were indicating that she has a sluggish thyroid, in addition to the fact that she also seems to have a mild anemia caused by probably B12 deficiency. Now, if you notice here that the only thing that came up in the flag zone was her white blood cells, which indicates her immune system function. But in general, nothing showed up outside of the reference interval. Yet, when we looked a little bit more closely, we saw possible hypoglycemia, adrenal stress, poor digestion, elevated iron, low triglycerides, sluggish thyroid, and a B12 deficient anemia. A number of these things can and will lead to fatigue in somebody. So we feel really comfortable what's going on with her and what we can do to help. So just to conclude, modern blood chemistries, there's two major problems. One has to do with the reference range. It's too broad and it looks for disease, but it's horrible for looking at health. And secondly, it does not contain enough markers to give you the whole picture and to really uh, adequately analyze a number of different patterns going on. So I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you very much for your time and I look forward to talking to you soon.